This conference will now be recorded. Hello students. I'm So we are going to attend NEET 2024 and now we are learning about uh, Plan Kingdom, which is a main chapter of this biology syllabus of NEET. So here we are going to the third part of this and in this chapter you are learning about the classification of plants into major groups like algae, bryophytes, pteridophytes, gymnosperms and angiosperms and you have to learn about the characteristic features of each type of plant group and the main plants which are belonging to that with example you need to learn right so we have learned about algae like what and all we have learned about algae uh, see algae that is also included in kingdom plantae and it is classified in the main kingdom plantae plant kingdom you know that it is divided into algae then Bryophyta, Pteridophyta, Gymnosperm, and Angio. Sperms. So, from this algae, we have learned algae, which is uh, the study of algae that is called as phycology. And we have learned about the nature, then the reproductive method, like vegetative, asexual, and sexual method of reproduction. And uh, some cases, exceptional cases, like uh, some are showing some different features among these algae also. And algae that is divided into, we have learned about different types of algae and the classification of algae like chlorophyce, phaophyce, and rhodophyce we have learned. And the features like habit, uh, sorry, habitat, then structure, then different forms, like colonial forms are there or uh, single unicellular forms are there. That and all we have learned. Then about the pigmentation and uh, Pigmentation in the sense the photosynthetic pigments which are present and in which form the stored food is present in that then the reproductive method, right? So in each one when you are learning about each Classification some main features you need to mention like in uh, phaophyce or Rhodophyce or chlorophyce whichever may be the classes of algae and their main characters when you are mentioning you have to mention like classes right then the common name right then pig major pigment and which is present in that and stored form of food in which form the food is stored and what about the cell wall components of cell wall like uh, it may be cellulose pectoropheic and cellulose and alginin pectin cellulose and pectin with polysphate Selfie tester in rhodophyce, right? The number of flagella and uh, the position of insertion of this. absent and sometimes it go. so that kind of points you need to mention in that then about the habitat fresh water forms or mine forms or brackish water forms water maybe you need to mention clear so now we are moving to tallow oh fire data Okay, thalophyta, stem thalophyta that was 
1 by term thalo phyta. That was by N. Lisho. Okay. And according to kingdom classification, kingdom classification classification is there, right? So all the algae, fungi, and proto uh, sorry prokaryotes were placed according to kingdom classification. In two kingdom and algae, fungi, and prokaryotes. Okay. And yeah, because they are plant bobblers. Why? Which feature is making them to classify them into this group like thallophyta because plant body their plant body is having a thallus like structure clear and in thallophyta another point which we need to mention here about thallophyta in thallophyta the male sex organ that is called as anthridia and female sex organ that is called as ugonia in thallophyta male sex organ that is called as anthridia Anthridia and female sex organ in thallophyta that is called as ugonia. Right. And here, one thing which we need to mention is the sex organs that is unicellular. Sex organ is unicellular. Both the sex organs are unicellular and they have. No jackets, or we can say that they are jacketless. Clear? And the sexual reproduction in Thallophyta is which and all mode of sexual reproduction you can see that may be isogamous, then anisogamous, and oogamous. Okay, isogamous, anisogamous, and oogamous. And in thallophyta, sexual reproduction takes place through zygotic meiosis. Okay, in thallophyta, we are saying about thallophyta in that how sexual reproduction is taking place through zygotic meiosis. Zygotic meiosis makes the sexual reproduction. Clear. So sexual reproduction is taking place through zygotic meiosis. So here meiosis, zygotic meiosis is taking place. So embryo formation is not there. No embryo formation. See this kind of points you need to remember because it may be confusing for you. So such points will give you tough questions. Like there is no Zygotic meiosis is taking place. So meiosis means you know how the division will be and there won't be any embryo formation, right? So embryo is not formed. So what in all points we said thallophyta, this uh, name, uh, the term that was given by Enlisher and according to the classification of two kingdom, prokaryotes, fungi and algae, all these were placed in thallophyta. Right. Why? Why they are placing in that category? Because plant body is like a thallus. And in thallophyta, male sex organ is called as anthridia, and the female sex organ is called as ugonia. And these sex organs that are unicellular and they don't have a jacket. Right. Then here the sexual reproduction that may be. Of different types like oogamous and isogamous or isogamous, and in thallophyta, sexual reproduction takes place through zygotic meiosis. In thallophyta, it's through zygotic meiosis, so there is no embryo formation. Clear? So thallophyta got over. Next, we are moving to bryophyta. So here, bryophyta, this term bryophyta, this term that was proposed by Robert Brown. Robert, Robert Brown, he proposed the bryophyta and the study of bryophyta that is called 
field as bryology. Bryology. So the study of bryophyta is called as bryology. And who is the father of bryology? Father of, who is considered as the father of bryology? Hedwig. Hedwig is considered as the father of bryology. Some scientists, they believe that covers father of bryology. And the father of Indian bryology. Father of Indian Bryology. Who is father of Indian bryology? Professor Shivram Kashyap. Shivram Kashyap. The characters. So from here you will get mainly two questions like father of Indian bryology and father of bryology. Right? And who coined this term bryology? Uh, coined this term bryophyta. It's Robert Brown. Bryophyta. Okay, then the, then the general features of bryophyta. Bryophytes, bryophytes, they are the first land plants. Bryophytes, first land plants. Bryophytes are the first land plants and they originated from aquatic plants like that. We are believing like that is originated. Bryophyta are originated from aquatic plants and they come on land through water. Okay, because some bryophytes have the characters which are similar to aquatic plants. Okay, why? Like in some we can the presence of air canal and also we can uh, imagine that they have some characters which are similar to aquatic plants. That's why we are saying they came to aquatic plants on land through water. Bryophytes, they are the first land plants and it's believed that they originated from aquatic plant and how they are coming to land. You're believing that this is what happened. They came, they are coming on land through water. Some bryophytes, they have some similar characters which is similar to the aquatic plants like uh, the presence of air canal. The features of aquatic plants, bryophytes also in bryophytes you can see this feature. And the second point which we want to mention is bryophytes all that as amphibians of plant kingdom. Amphibians, amphibians of plant kingdom. Okay, bryophyte plant kingdom. It's called as amphibians of the kingdom because these plants can live in soil, but they are depending or they need water for their fish, right? So they are living on land and they are depending upon water for their fertilization. Okay, so that's why bryophytes are called as amphibians of plant kingdom. They need amphibians means they need both land and water, right? So amphibians of the plant kingdom, which are they? Bryophytes and these plants can live in soil, but they are depending on water for their fertilization. And bryophytes, they are not considered as successful land plants. Why? What is the reason why they, they are also like land plants? They are living some stage on the land area, right? And why they are called as The unsuccessful land plants because vascular tissue is absent in them, right? And they need water for fertilization. These are not successful land plants. So bryophytes are not considered a, a successful land plants because vascular tissue is absent. 
muscular tissue is absent muscular tissue is absent and they need water for their fertilization depending on water for fertilization so due to the absence of muscular tissue bryophytes cannot grow. here muscular tissue is absent so they cannot grow very tall and the process of water collection in bryophyte that takes place with the help of parenchyma so how water conduction is taking place in them in bryophyta vascular tissue is absent so they cannot grow very tall right they cannot grow tall we can say that they cannot grow tall because water conduction is impossible if they are growing tall water conduction is impossible so how water conduction is taking place here in this small plants like water conduction is taking place with the help of parenchyma okay parenchyma tissues are or the cell groups they are helping for the water conduction here parenchyma what is parenchyma doing tissue that is helping for the water conduction okay so root another point we need to say that roots that are bryophytes root is absent right root is also absent in bryophyte and there you can see in the case of bryophyta you can see stem like and leaf like structures you can see stem like structure and leaf like structures these are the general features you see stem like structure and leaf like structures of bryophytes which are functionally also they are doing the similar function like leaves and stem okay so stem like and leaf like structures of bryophytes they are functionally similar to the stem and leaf of higher plants but that is not exactly the stem and leaf it is the structurally it is similar to stem and leaf and it is doing the function almost similar function it is performing okay but it is not exactly stem and leaf of higher plants it's similar to the higher plant stem and leaf structure then the next point is bryophytes are preferring to grow in moist or wet and shady places in moist condition and in shady places they may grow or they are preferring to grow in that kind of condition wet places okay so these are important points or general features which we can say and the life cycle of bryophytes life cycle of bryophyte here you can see main plant body main plant body of bryophyte that is haploid main plant body is haploid okay main plant body is haploid and this plant body produces gametes okay produces gametes and that is called as this gamete producing body that is called as gametophyte gametophyte this main plant body is in haploid condition then it is producing gametes that's why it is called as gametophyte right and here see gametes are producing on the gametophyte so the sex organs are formed on gametophyte right that's why it is producing the gametes gametophyte okay and here when we are saying about the sex organs we can say that these are multicellular and they are jacketed with jacket sex organs are multicellular and with jacket okay in which one in bryophyte and the male sex organ that is called as male sex organ is called as antheridium
and the female sex organ is called as archegonium. Male sex organ is called as andridium, and the female sex organ is called as archegonium. Clear? And here the archegonium, the female sex organ, the archegonium that is flask shaped. In flask shape, you can see this archegonium. Okay. Here the male gametes, male gametes, male gametes of this bryophytes, they are motile. They are able to move. They are motile forms. Okay. And these motile gametes, they are called as Motile gametes are called as what? They are called as androzoids. So, main sex organ is called as anthridium, and this anthridium produces gametes, and these gametes are motile, and this motile male gametes are called as androzoids. Clear? And these androzoids, what in what shape usually that? Androsoids are present. Usually, it is present in coma shape. In coma shape, we can see, and shape they are biflagellated. Right? We said they are motile. Androsoids are more two flagellates. They are biflagellated. Okay. Female gamete. Here, female sex organ is called as archegonium, which is flashed. Shaped and that produces female gamete, female gamete, and that gamete turning the main plant body right, and that produces gametes. That's why it is called as gametophyte, gamete producing body. That's why the name gametophyte. Okay, and the sex organs are formed on this gametophyte. And these sex organs, they are multicellular and they have jacket or they are jacketed in bryophytes. So, male sex organ is called as anthridium and the female sex organ is called as archegonium. And this archegonium is flask shaped. Male gamete of bryophyte, they have flagella, so they are motile forms. And the female gamete is called as egg. So, the motile male gametes are called as anthrozoids. And anthrozoids, you can see usually in coma shape. And we said that is motile form, they have two flagellas they are biflagellated clear and few more points which we need to learn that is in bryophyta, fertilization, fertilization is performed by zoidogamy. Zoidogamy, this kind of terms you need to note down. Zoidogamy, that is the fertilization which is performed in bryophyta. That means the male gamete, male gamete is having flagella, we said, right? So the male gamete can move. The male gamete swim into water to reach the female gamete and then fertilization is taking place, right? Motile male gamete, how it can move? Because it is having two flagellas that will move through water. It will swim and it will reach near the female gamete and then fertilization is happening, okay? That is called a pseudogamy. Next, fertilization, the fusion of male and female gamete is happening or fertilization is happening. So, as a result of that fertilization, you know, both haploid gametes are there. So, they are fusing and fertilization that is resulting in the formation of a diploid zygote. Zygote, which is diploid or 2n number of chromosomes. It is diploid. So, diploid zygote is forming and this zygote that does not undergo reduction division. Okay. So there is no reduction division or there is no meiosis for this. For this zygote, no meiosis. Meiosis only gives reduction in their chromosome number. So there is no reduction division immediately. Right. And this zygote 
initiate the sporophytic generation. Zygote initiates the sporophytic generation. Sporophytic generation. Clear? And this sporophytic generation, that is a deployed stage because there is no reduction division is happening. And this zygote is giving rise to sporophytic generation. This is also, there is no division in this stage. So that is also in a deployed stage, right? Then the zygote forms embryo, right? Zygote that forms embryo and then sporophyte embryo then sporophyte right how by mitosis their mitosis is taking place so chromosome number will remain same so the sporophyte bryophyta here we said about the sporophyte. So the sporophyte breast of no and no root for the sporophyta. No root stem sporophyte. Sporophyte means the spore producing body that doesn't have root, stem, or leaf. Clear? But it is having foot, seta, and capsule. We learn with example, we learn. It is having Foot, seta, and capsule. With diagram, we need to learn. So that is known as with foot, seta, and capsule. That is called as porogamy. Okay. Then some of the cells which is present in the capsule of that sporophyte that is functioning as spore mother cell. Okay, and here in the spore mother cell, meiosis is taking place. Okay, and as a result of that meiosis, meiosis of spore mother cell, inside capsule, some cells will work or uh, some of the cells which are present inside the capsule of that sporophyte or the spore producing body that will work as a spore mother cell it will produce spore. So how the spores are getting produced, meiosis is taking place inside the spore mother cell and as a result of that meiosis, spores are getting formed but their meiosis, which division is taking place? Meiosis, that is very important. So meiosis is taking place means again chromosome number is getting reduced. That is a reduction division, meiosis. So there as a result of that meiosis, haploid spores. Haploid spores are getting formed clear then now already spores are produced then the germination of that spore is direct that may be direct or indirect right in liverworts and hornworts like these are the different types so here liverworts and hornworts the germination of spore is direct in which one in liverwort and hornwort in both the germination of spore is direct direct germination of spore is taking place that means each spore that forms a gametophyte or the gamete producing body after germination and each spore then gametophyte then sporophyte will get produced see now we said first we said about gametophyte then the sporophyte is getting produced and then it is producing spores the spore will produce what each spore which is getting produced that will germinate directly and that will form the gametophyte after germination right each spore that forms thallus okay and from that thallus like structure a sporophyte is getting formed which is a spore producing body and inside that spore mother cell will work and it will undergo meiosis then it will produce haploid spores right again the spores are getting germinated directly so that cycle will go on okay so, but the germination of spores in moses, that is indirect. Moses, in that spore germination. 
that is indirect see in moses i'll tell you that clearly in moses the spore germination that is indirect we can say see in moses a multicellular filament is formed after the germination of spore so spore germination is taking place and what is happening there multicellular filament is getting formed a multicellular filament is getting formed where spore after spore germination there a multicellular filament is getting formed so this filament is called as protonema this multicellular filament that is called as protonema okay protonema is the multicellular filament okay now buds are formed on this protonema on protonema buds are getting formed okay and each bud develops and that forms gametophyte plant each bud is getting developed and that is forming a gametophyte plant so indirect germination is the best for survival so moses are they are gregarious in nature because they appear in group which one moses okay see here protonema developed from spore that is called as primary protonema and the protonema developed from the parts other the spore that is called a secondary protonema okay and here the special points which we need to note down is sexual reproduction in bryophyta in bryophyte sexual reproduction that is oogamous type and life cycle life cycle that is haplodiplontic type haplodiplontic life cycle and in bryophyta the sporophyte is dependent on gametophyte sporophyta both are not independent sporophyte the sporophyte sporophyte or the spore bearing body that is depending on gametophyte depending on gametophyte okay so this is a unique character of bryophyte this uh, sporophyte is depending upon the gametophyte that is a unique feature of bryophyta clear and here this bryophyta that is divided into three classes okay bryophyta is divided into that is divided into three classes which are they hepatic opsida then anthocera opsida anthoceratopsida hepatic opsida anthoceratopsida then bryopsida okay so first we need to learn about hepatic opsida okay hepatic opsida see hepatic opsida they are otherwise called as liverworts liverworts okay so hepatic opsida is also called as liverworts so bryophytes 
include in this class or bryophytes which are coming under class coming under liverworts or hepatic copsida they have a shape like liver okay bryophytes of this bryophytes which are coming under hepatic copsida they have a liver like shape that's why we are calling as liver words okay so example we can say marcantia rutia all this they are called liver words that's why called liver words example see this is mark this is called as uh, this is the one which is called as marcantia and so common one okay and the plant body of liverworts or hepatic copsida that is thallus like dorsiventral plant body that is having an a thallus like structure see here you can see thallus like structure plant body is thallus like and it is dorsi ventral then rhizoids you can see small root like structures rhizoids and scales rhizoids and scales are present on thallus here you can see rhizoids the small root like structures they are present on thallus this rhizoids you can see it's very minute structure right they are unicellular and they don't have branch so they are unbranched and unicellular unicellular and among this leafy members for example porella and all leafy members so they have tiny leaf like two stru structures okay so you know uh, if you want you can take the example porella and in that you can see leafy member uh, that is porella example note down the example and they have a very tiny leaf like appendage and that in two rows you can see okay on what on stem like structure and here the sporophyte of liver word sporophyte sporophyte of liver word that is completely depending upon the gametophyte that is this is dependent on gametophyte for food water and habitat see this is the the sporophyte so that sporophyte is completely depending upon the gametophyte for survival for water habitat and for food so the sporophyte of liver wort it is made up of food seta and capsule in general characters we have discussed right see exceptional case you can see in rixia that is a bryophyte but that is an exceptional case so in rixia sporophyte is made up of only capsule there is no food seta and all only capsule you can see in rixia in rixia only capsule is present clear and examples we can say porella rixia marcantia and all in bryophytes sporophyte of rixia is the simplest okay in rixia about rixia we can make separate note so uh, many points you can learn like in bryophyte among the bryophytes sporophyte of rixia that is a simple one okay so the simplest one is sporophyte of rixia and the other points like asexual reproduction in liverworts that is taking place by fragmentation of that thallus asexual reproduction asexual reproduction 
in liver words or hepatic oxida that is taking place by fragmentation of thallus fragmentation of thalli that makes the or another one is there or it is the formation of some special structures which is called as gemmae special structures which are called as gemmae and this gemmae they are green colored and they are multicellular and they are asexual buds which is developing in small receptacles called gemmae cups and they are located on thallus see here you can see gemmae cups the gemma cup and on thallus you can see that cup it is developing on the thallus itself okay and this gemmae that become detached from the parental body this will get detached from the parental body and that will germinate into a new individual okay so it's clear very clear in this case mark and shia you can see it's clearly you can see in this picture so during the sexual reproduction male and female sex organs are producing or they are getting produced on the uh, same thallus or it may get produced on the different thallus see here in markantia it's clear that this male thallus and female thallus both are different separately getting produced right male thallus is there female thallus is there so here for sexual reproduction male and female sex organs they are producing getting produced on the same thallus or maybe on different thallus so that's about hepatic oxida then next about anthoceratopsida okay this anthoceratopsida is otherwise called as hornworts okay horn words here this plant body of horn words that is also thallus like structures here also thallus like structure and but here one thing is that scales are absent rhizoids are present rhizoid that is present scales scales that is absent okay rhizoids are present on thallus scales are absent and this rhizoids they are unicellular and they are unbranched unicellular unbranched okay and the sporophyte of horn birds that is divided into the sporophyte or uh, the spore bearing body that Uh, sporophyte of hornwort that is divided into foot and capsule but in the first one hepatic oxida how was that it was divided into foot seed and capsule right but here in hornworts it is divided into foot and capsule and the sporophyte of hornwort that is not completely dependent on the gametophyte okay this is not depending upon gametophyte it's partially depending because the sporophyte is photosynthetic therefore it can manufacture the food so it does not depend on gametophyte for food it depends only for water and habitat clear that here sporophyte of hornwort is not completely dependent on gametophyte okay here the difference you can see from uh, the uh, liver words that is completely dependent here the sporophyte of hornwort is not completely dependent on the gametophyte because uh, we can say it's partially dependent why sporophyte is having photosynthetic capacity so they can synthesize or they can manufacture its own food so it's not depending upon the gametophyte gam gametophyte for food okay only for the habitat and for water it is depending
this is not completely dependent okay and in horn words at the basal part of capsule there is a special type of meristem which is present so due to the activeness of this special meristem the capsule will go, grow very rapidly and that will grow like a horn of animals basal part of of capsule here foot and capsule only those two parts are there right so at the basal part of capsule a special meristem is there and this will grow like horn of animals that's why the name horn word it got and this will be very active and that can grow very rapidly so the capsule grows very rapidly and that grows like a horn of animal that's why it is called as horn words okay examples here we can say anthoceros okay so we have learned about horn words and liver words next bryopsida okay next type is bryopsida see all the mosses they are included in this class which one bryophyte all the mosses mosses are included in bryopsida so the plant body of mosses that is made up of stem like structure leaf like structure and root like or rhizoid we can say see here you can see root like structure stem like structure is there leaf like structure is also there and this rhizoids present in the plant of this class are multicellular earlier we said their rhizoids are there but they are, they are very minute structure and that is unicellular but here in bryopsida the rhizoids they are multicellular and here you can see here itself you can see it's very clear in the picture that is branch and that is obliquely septate clear so all the mosses are included in this class and the plant body is divided into stem like leaf like and root like structure root like structure is otherwise called as rhizoids and these rhizoids are multicellular and they are branched okay and here one special feature which you need to note down is the presence of leaf like structure okay so leaf like structure in gametophyte you can see this leaf like structure they are not leaves they are leaf like structure which are present in gametophyte this is a unique feature of moss because in plant kingdom any gametophyte which do not have leaf like structure so they consist of a bright slender axis which is bearing spirally arranged leaf okay this leaf like structures are spirally arranged and here the vegetative reproduction vegetative reproduction vegetative reproduction in mosses that is by fragmentation that is by fragmentation and budding fragmentation and budding in the secondary protonema and during sexual reproduction see here it's very clear this is the gametophyte and this is the sporophyte and this is capsule here seta and these are the leaf like structures this is the main axis and these are rhizoids it's very clear this diagram you need to learn see here the sexual reproduction the sex organs are produced at the apex of leafy shoots at the apex of 
leafy shoots and the sporophyte here this is the sporophyte that means spore wearing body a sporophyte in moses that is more elaborate or more developed the sporophyte is more developed in moses okay so compared to the liverworts this is more developed and the sporophyte of moss that is divided he see here you can see the uh, sporophyte which is divided into foot seta and capsule okay here the foot seta and capsule next here See here, you can see the sporophyte of moss that is partially dependent, like uh, that of hornworts. That is, it is having photosynthetic capacity, or it is having that photosynthetic nature. The mosses have an elaborate mechanism of spore dispersal. Mosses, there another one, elaborate mechanism of spore dispersal. clear so here you can see gametophyte sporophyte here you can see the rhizoids and main axis leaves seta capsule clear so here this is funaria example funaria so this diagram you need to learn and you can very clearly see all the parts the gametophyte and sporophyte you can explain it very easily with the help of this diagram okay then example for uh, moses which generally you can say first one is funaria then polytrichum buxbomia sphagnum all these are examples see funaria that is called as rope moss okay then polytrichum polytrichum is called as hair cap moss And the other one, Baxbornia. Uh, Boxbomia. Boxbomia. That is saprophytic moss. Okay. And here, peat moss. Peat moss, this is a fossil fuel that is obtained from bog. So the formation of peat takes place by the fossilization of sphagnum. fossilization of which one sphagnum right which is a type of moss and this sphagnum grows in acidic bog on acidic bog sphagnum grows okay so the number of bacteria are less in bog due to which the degradation of the dead cell could not take place so hence it is present in the form of what fossil So here we are saying the uses and sphagnum can absorb water in very high amount. Okay, therefore it can absorb water in a very high amount. So it is used in the formation of absorbent cotton in Europe. Absorbent cotton. So in Europe, in the form of absorbent cotton, which one is used? Sphagnum is also used in that form. See, generally we can say bryophytes, they are of little economic importance. They have some economical importance because some mosses, they are providing food for uh, these herbaceous mammals, birds and some other animals. And some species of phag uh, this sphagnum, uh, which is a moss, that is providing peat, which have 
like uh, they are used as fuel and their capacity to hold water and that is used as a packing material for the uh, transshipment of uh, living material so moss is along with lichens they are the first organism to colonize rocks so they are having higher ecological importance and they decompose rock making substrate which is suitable for the growth of higher plants okay so nowadays for gardening purpose for that also mosses are being used so these are the main uses like sphagnum is very important just this is the sphagnum here you can see so that is having anthradial branch these are the branches anthradial branches there archegonial see here you can see the archegonium and this is the funeraria okay this is a sphagnum uh, gametophyte the gamete bearing anthradial branch and archegonial branches there so this is sphagnum gametophyte and for what and all purpose this sphagnum is being used as absorbent cotton then uh, peat moss uh, like fossil fuel so these are the importance of this sphagnum funeraria and all clear so that's all about which one about bryophyta and in next class we'll be learning about uh, pteridophyta gymnosperms and angiosperms clear thank you